Our view, Kevin and our, my view, was that we, there was a need for and an opportunity for a textbook. And since we had this course that we'd designed, which did try to incorporate theory and research, we thought we had the basis for that text. And the, that we started in 1981, and it was published first in 1984. And right from the start, it had some key aims and principles. One, it had to have a clear pedagogy, both to help tutors develop courses and for students to follow the subject. Second, it should incorporate both theory and research, but also an understanding of management practice. Uh, so our view was that you couldn't have a course that was just about theory, but theory did help people develop strategy. But unless they understood management practice, uh, then they wouldn't be able to do anything. So both were necessary. A third, that the book should not just be a sort of bag of techniques. Our view was that strategies didn't just neatly drop out of analytic models and so on. Models were helpful in thinking about strategy and strategic issues, but they didn't provide, provide solutions. In short, really, that what we saw strategy as was the need for uh, managers to exercise informed judgment about complex issues of strategy. Well, we had three key decisions to make at the start. The first one was to break down the subject matter into its three elements of analysis, choice and implementation. Although corporate planning frameworks did just that, they presented it in a very linear way, almost like the three steps to heaven, out of which would come the perfect strategy. In contrast, that we were keen to emphasise that the links between these three elements were much more complex than that, and also that you could start strategic change at any of those points of analysis, choice or implementation. The second decision was about the title of the book. Because we were keen to have a book which was about thinking through strategy, exploring seemed to be almost the perfect word. And it re-emphasised the fact that this was not just a book of techniques. The third decision was to have a diagram which showed the links between the sections and the chapters of the book. We call this the Exploring Strategy Framework. Because I was a scientist, it ended up looking pretty much like a chemical molecule, where the atoms are tightly bound together and so difficult to change. And this is what we were trying to say about strategy too. It was difficult to change. When Richard joined the team, he was definitely not a scientist, and he was keen to persuade us to change the model to one of overlapping spheres and this still stands today in the book. We wanted to build in um, both models from sort of hard economic analysis, uh, but also cultural and political analyses. And the reason for that was that we felt the need for readers to understand the behavioral aspects of strategy, what managers do and how strategies develop in, in practice. We also felt the need to emphasise that strategy development might be different in different contexts. So strategy development might be different in very fast changing environments, say, from slower changing environments. And it might differ in large corporations from small corporations or small businesses. It might differ in terms of the ownership of businesses. Because we wanted exploring strategy to be used in many different situations to help link theory to practice, we provided 50 one-page mini-cases which we called illustrations, and there are now about 70 in the book. In fact, so successful was that model that many other author authors have imitated it. With the second edition, we added a text and cases version with 16 longer cases, and there are now 30 of those. Secondly, as international use grew quickly, Pearson steadily offered translations, and there are now about 10, particularly for Europe, Asia and South America. Thirdly, as shorter courses became more widespread, some teachers needed a concise version, and that's why we launched Fundamentals of Strategy, now in its sixth edition. Finally, teachers welcomed much more support because they were busy. So we added lots more features inside the book and progressively created a large bank of support materials. The 
managers face major challenges in developing strategy. That is because they face a changing world. You know it's going to change. You know there's likely to be new competitors, maybe, almost certainly, uh, in, in some areas. There'll be need for new skills. There may be competing expectations from different stakeholders. So, in those circumstances, current know-how and current experience, which of course is important in for managers, is not sufficient. In fact, it, it, it could be counterproductive in terms of a changing environment because it w weds people to what they know in the past rather than what they need to know in the future. So our view was that what's needed is for managers to be questioning. Questioning about the status quo of their organisations and questioning about where it's going. And if that's the case, there are some fundamental requirements. Sensitivity to the cha changes that they face around them. Imagination about the strategies required to address those changes. Flexibility to change their organisations and turn strategies into action. And I think what we tried to do in the first edition was to address those challenges and those requirements. And yes, I would say that that same set of requirements has been carried through in subsequent editions.